Hey guys, in this tutorial I want to show you how you can create a music player filter like this in the Spark AR Studio with an overlay and also with this animated indicator to make it more realistic. We will have a blurred background with a black overlay and also this cover image here. I will provide you all the assets you need for this filter, but of course you can use your own um, assets as a, for the overlay to follow along this tutorial. So let's start! Hey again! So let's create this music player filter here in the Spark AR Studio. Before we start creating the filter, make sure you have downloaded all the assets we need for this filter to follow along this tutorial. But of course you can create your own assets to yeah, use in this filter. To download the assets just go to the description of this video and then click on the download link. You will end up here on this Dropbox site and here just click on download. Then you will download a zip folder. Then just unzip the folder and then you will find another folder in there with all the assets we need for this filter. After the download is done, um, we can import our assets to the Spark AR Studio. So just um, select all our free assets we need for this filter and then just drag and drop it into the yeah, assets panel of the Spark AR Studio. So after we have um, imported the free assets, we can start creating the filter here in the Spark AR Studio. The first thing I will do is to set the compression to none of my textures. So for this just select all three textures, then go to the right hand side and here under the compression um, set the compression from automatic to none at iOS, Android and older Android. So after we have done this we can start creating some materials for our filter and yeah we need some of them. So I will start creating the first material, just click on the little plus and select material. My first material will have the name overlay. So then I select my material, go to the right hand side and set the shader type to flat and as a texture I will select here the overlay texture. So now for the second material I do the same and this material will be the indicator material and again go to the right hand side and set the shader type to flat and as a texture we select here the indicator texture. So now we can start creating the overlay for our filter. For this we go to our scene, click on the little plus and here we create a rectangle object. I will um, rename this rectangle object to overlay. Now just select the rectangle, go to the right hand side and here set the width to fill width and the height to fill height. Just click in the field and then select fill height. So now go down to the materials and here select the overlay material. So now we have this um, yeah, music player overlay already in our frame. So the next thing is that we create another rectangle. And I will call this rectangle indicator. So now again go to the right hand side, set the width to fill width and the height to fill height. Go down to materials and now select the indicator material. And now you will see that we have here this little indicator which we will later animate that it moves from the left to the right so to simulate this um, yeah, music overlay. So the next step is to blur our background. For this we need a new material. I will um, yeah, just create a new material and call this material blur. So go again to the right hand side and now set the shader type to flat. Now we go down to the shader properties to diffuse and now we don't um, choose a texture but we will click here on this little arrow next to texture. Just click on it and then your patch editor will pop up with this bl yellow blur patch in it. So now we need something from the Spark AR asset library. For this we go to the left hand side to the asset library icon and then just click on it. So this window will open up and here we search for blur. After we hit enter we should find this and blur patch asset here. Just click on it and then click here on import free. After the download is done you can close the AR library. Now you will find this blur patch in your 
Assets panel. Now just drag and drop this blur patch into the patch editor um, of the Spark AR Studio. Now an uh, error will occur as you can see and yeah everything freezes but this is normal so we need to do something to get rid of this error. Now we go to our scene, click on the camera then go to the right hand side and here click on the little plus next to texture extraction. Now we can find this camera texture zero texture in our assets panel. Now just drag and drop the camera texture to your patch editor and then connect the RGBA output of the camera texture with the texture input of the blur patch. And now everything is back to normal and the error, error is yeah, disappears. So now just connect the output patch of the blur patch with the input of the blur patch. So now nothing has changed but we will do this now. So for this go again to your scene and create another rectangle. I will call this rectangle blur. Then again make sure you go to the right hand side and set the width to fill width and the height to fill height. So now go down to materials and for this select of course the blur material and now you can see that your image is a little bit blurred but the overlay has disappeared. To change this go to your scene and then just drag and drop the, the blur layer above the overlay and the indicator layer. So now our elements are back. Now we just do another thing to make sure everything has its right order and there are no glitches or something like this. For this we go down to our materials and select all three of them. Now we go to the right hand side and here under advanced render options we deselect the use dev test and the right to dev. So now everything should work fine because otherwise it could be that when you test it on your device that some layers are not visible. So now we want to create another overlay to darken our blur effect and of course we want um, the cover image here of our, yeah, of our filter. So the next thing I will create is the, the darken effect. For this we go to our assets panel and create a new material. So I will call this material just black. Now select the black material, go to the right hand side and set the shader type to flat. Now go down to diffuse and set the color to a black color or to any other color you want as an overlay. So now just hit OK. So now we also need a rectangle for this, for this material. So again go to your scene, click on the plus and create another rectangle. So I will call this rectangle black and then I will go again to the right hand side and set the width to fill width and the height to fill height. Now I go down to materials and now I select the black material. So at the moment the whole screen is black but let's change this. Go again to your scene and then and yeah, drag and drop the black layer above the overlay and indicator layer but underneath the blur layer. So now the elements are back but now it's still black so we have to change the opacity of our layer so for this go to your assets panel and select the black material now go to the right hand side and now set the opacity to yeah about 40 percent but of course you can play around and set it to whatever value you want and now you can also change the color so just go up to color and here when you select a different color you see the overlay changes its color but I will yeah, leave it at to black. So I hit OK and now we have this overlay. So now it's time to, to create our cover image. So for this we need another material. So just go to, to your assets panel, click on the plus, create a new material and I will call this material cover. So now I go again to the right hand side and set the shader type to flat. Now for the texture we select our camera texture and now we also have to activate the alpha channel here. So for this just click on this checkbox next to alpha and then here select as the texture the mask texture. 
So now this is set up the material and now we need of course <laughs> another um, yeah, rectangle. So go to your scene, click on the little plus and yeah, search for rectangle. So again the rectangle is on the left upper corner. To change this select the rectangle, go to the right hand side and set the width to fill width and the height to fill height. Now go down to materials and select the cover material and now you can already see that here we have this squared cover in the middle but of course we want it smaller and a little bit yeah above the the element so for this we select our rectangle and now for the scale i will set the scale of this to 0 0.6 so now it is a little bit smaller but of course you can also play around with the size so i think i will make it a little bit bigger to 0.7 so now go to your viewport and here go to mode and set this to edit 2d objects now you can better edit your objects here and now just yeah, drag the, the new rectangle around so it fits the screen or the position you want it to have in so yeah I will go with this position I think that is pretty nice so and also make sure that your rectangle of this is underneath every other um, layer here in the scene so the next step is that we want to animate this indicator here so yeah it's when we open the filter this moves along the line so it has a better music player effect but before we do this make sure that you set you select the new materials you have created and again disable all the advanced render options so use dev test and right to dev and now every for every um, material this should be disabled so now let's animate this indicator so for this we have to go to our indicator rectangle then go to the right hand side and here at the position click on the little arrow next to it so now we have this indicator patch with the 2d position values in our patch editor now we need of course an animation patch i will use a loop animation patch so for this go to add patch and search for loop animation so and now the duration is set to one but i will yeah, set it to let's say 30 seconds so now we need another patch so add a patch and search for transition so at this patch we have to change something because at the moment it has three values because it's now for a vector three um, thing but we need a vector two so for this just select the transition patch and here click on this little arrow next to vector three and here select vector two so now connect the progress output of the loop animation with the progress input of the transition patch set the start to zero for x and zero for y and the end i will set to 250 for x and zero for y and now when we connect the value output with our 2d position input of the indicator patch we can see that our indicator is moving along the line so yeah that was how to create a music player effect here in this buggy r studio i hope i could help you with this video if yes give it a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel it would be nice when you subscribe to it thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye